This video will discuss the wave functions of the particle in a ring quantum mechanical model system. So we start off by our, with our model that we have from our previous videos in this chapter, where we have a particle that is free to move anywhere inside a fixed circular orbit. So it has a radius from the origin fixed at capital R. It has the angle from the z-axis constrained to be 90 degrees, putting it in the xy plane and it's free to move in its azimuthal angle in spherical polar coordinates phi from 0 to 360 degrees. So we determined that the Hamiltonian for the system was equal to just the kinetic energy inside the ring minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the particle times radius of the ring squared times the second derivative with respect to the angle phi we have the energies of this system we determined to be h bar squared times n squared over 2 m r squared, where n is a quantum number which can be any integer, 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. And again, our wave function we showed uh, in spherical polar coordinates of r, theta, and phi. It has a fixed radius of capital R. It has a fixed theta, a fixed polar angle of pi over 2, or 90 degrees, and it's free to move in the azimuthal angle, or the angle in the xy plane, phi. So our wave function is then a one-dimensional function of the variable phi. Okay, we also determined in the previous video that the wave function, as a, which is uh, specific to a given quantum number as a function of phi, is going to equal some normalization constant times a complex exponential, e to the i n phi. So in this case, n is going to equal 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. So to get this normalization constant, we're going to do the normalization integral for this wave function. So 1, or a 100% chance of finding the particle somewhere in some value of phi. 1 equals the integral over the entire domain, 0 to 2 pi psi star of phi times psi of phi d phi. So we have 1 equals integral from 0 to 2 pi n e to the i n phi star times n e to the i n phi d phi. So this complex conjugate here, we do have an imaginary part there. So when we take the complex conjugate, anywhere where we find an i, we substitute in minus i. Anywhere we find a minus i, we substitute in i. So e to the i n phi is going to equal e to the minus i n phi. So this is going to have an e to the minus i n phi here. So e to the minus i n phi times e to the i n phi. Whenever you have e to the x times e to the minus x, that's e to the x minus x or e to the 0, which is going to give us 1. So everything inside this integral here is going to be 1 except for d phi. We can additionally factor out the normalization constant, since that is a constant with respect to phi. So now I have 1 equals n squared times the integral from 0 to 2 pi integrated over phi. So 0 d phi is going to equal, the integral of d phi is going to equal phi. Evaluated at 2 pi is 2 pi. Evaluated at 0 is 0. So 2 pi minus 0 gives me 2 pi. So this integral is going to have is going to be 1 equals 2 pi times n squared. So my normalization constant n is going to equal 1 over the square root of 2 pi. So my particle in a ring wave functions, psi n of phi, is going to equal 1 over the square root of 2 pi times e to the i n phi. So for the ground state of this system, as I said, n can be any integer. And since n depends on the quantum number squared, the lowest uh, squared integer is going to be 0 squared. So we have psi 0 of phi is equal to, well, e to the 0 is just 1. So this wave function in the ground state is just 1 over the square root of 2 pi. It's flat. The particle is equally likely to be everywhere. And the energy of that state is equal to 0. Okay, next we have psi of plus or minus 1. So psi of 1 and psi of minus 1 is going to equal 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the plus or minus i phi. 
So we have plus or minus 1 up here, so we get plus or minus i phi. Substituting in plus or minus 1 squared is 1. So we get e plus or minus 1 is going to equal, I believe I need to change these to 2s. That's better. Okay, so we have e to, of plus or minus 1 equals h bar squared over 2m r squared, 2 times the mass of the particle times the radius of the ring squared. And last example, psi plus or minus 2 of phi equals 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the plus or minus 2 i phi. So there, plus or minus 2 squared is 4. So e plus or minus 2 is 4 h bar squared over 2 m r squared. So we see at each increase in energy, we get our complex exponential, which is going up 1, depending on the quantum number. We see our ground state is singly degenerate. And then every state above that is going to be doubly degenerate as the plus n and minus n states are going to be equal in energy.